Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to another FM 2018 Scout Report. As I say this year, the new scouting feature in the game has certainly helped me unearth a lot of gems. So, as previously stated in the last video, we will be going with the more obvious ones to start with, just to kind of get us into the groove, before we go more in-depth. There might be some players that people haven't heard of. Last episode was obviously Chris Cadden, player that plays for uh, the team of support, Motherwell. So naturally we'll move on a little bit, and that is to someone within the league that everyone pretty much knows if you're based in Scotland, and that is of course, Kieran Tierney. Um, as you can see there, uh, the Celtic researcher has rated him very highly, and to be honest, rightly so. You can see there, 10.75 million the games rated him at, 20 years of age, he is on a long-term contract as well, he signed a, a six-year contract pretty recently with Celtic, and to be honest, having watched him quite a good few times uh, in the flesh, the cup final, etc., uh, against us, he certainly, as I say, one player that is going to have a, a hell of a career already capped in his country as well. You can see here, um, let's just obviously have a look at the stats. And when you are 20 years of age and you have, what is that, four stats that are less than double figures, you know, you're, you're going to be a hell of a player. I mean, if it's only free kick taking, finishing, penalty taking and vision that is under the rating of 10. Let's be honest, he's a left back. So finishing, free kick taking and penalty taking aren't really essential. Vision really depends because, I say, if you're going to be somebody like Celtic, you are going to want Kieran Tierney to bomb forward. So maybe that could use a little bit of improvement, but again, he's 20. So, you know, you've got seven, seven years pretty much to basically get his stats up to the desired level you want them to be at. But 14 crossing assists, exceptional at this age as well, especially for a fullback. Plenty of time to improve that. Good dribbling. First touch at 13. A negative flood say, is probably heading at 12, jump and reach at 10. But again, fullbacks are not notoriously great, uh, you know, for heading. They are usually people that get out jumped. So again, plenty of time to work on that. 14 tackling, 12 passing, so maybe a passing could be something to look at. Marking maybe I'd say at 10, to so say as someone that more bombs forward. But it depends what kind of team you're going to sign him for, because being perfectly honest, he's not cheap in this game. So he is going to be someone you'd probably sign for. I'd say an Arsenal, Chelsea would be the kind of teams you'd be looking to sign him for. Uh, if you're not that side of the look, sure, uh, probably something that Manchester United as well. If we move on to the, the mental side of things, absolutely fantastic. 19 determination. He's brave with 17 stat there. Good concentration. Decision making a sale improve over time, but already pretty solid. A leader at six, with 16 there, so I mean, that's only going to get better and better. And good teamwork and work rate. And as we said, physically, jump and reach is at least a bit to be desired, but can be improved. Pacey, good stamina, strength again. He'll build on that. Smaller things we can take from this. All left foot because he's on the left hand side. He's got a driven personality. And the player traits that have been given to him. Running with the ball down the left hand side. Knocking the ball past the opponent and hugging the touchline. So someone that is going to continually bomb forward. So we're just going to the profile screen here. Now his main role will be as a fullback. You can see he's got all the attributes you want there. So apart from that marking that could, as I say, leave a little bit to be desired. Me personally, um, I play wing backs in my formation. So if he was someone that was going to be signing for, for my NEC team, I would be more than likely wanting them to improve the marking and the passing uh, and maybe his decision making as well, because there's someone that is going to be bombing forward at all times. Now, in my NEC save, honestly, he's just stayed at Celtic. I don't feel any team has put a bid forward uh, that Celtic have found acceptable. His value has dropped a little bit, but I think that's just the way he was a little bit more than his contract. When I started my 80 save, Celtic did want 66 million to start with. Um, I think it's just one of those ones Celtic had no intention to sell someone on a long term contract. But I do imagine, Keelan Tierney, if you have got about 20 million in the Premier League, I think you could certainly get him for that. And I, su I suppose if you did look to tap him up, there could be potential there to get him for even more if he decided to submit a transfer request. But as I say, this is him at the start of the game. Yeah, I do have a holiday save as well. So let's check how T Tierney looks. A few years in. So this is Kieran Tierney in the future. 2024, and we can see here he's now at Arsenal. 69 caps to his country, a hell of a wage rise now, 150 grand a week. Valued at a nice 41 million. You've got to love inflation in this year's FM, where a lot of players are, are now rated at, quite frankly, maniac level of, um, of values. I think I've... Um, many C save have got Man City where the full 
starting eleven is over sixty million worth in, in value. So I suppose long term contracts do play a factor into that. And if you're in a long term contract with a big wage, you know, you're effectively going to see your value boosted a good bit higher. Now what is interesting with Kieran Tierney here, there's quite a few skills that have actually declined. And so I don't think he's actually improved too much. You know, I've, I've certainly noticed jumping reach has jumped down to eight, so I don't know what's quite happened there. But a few things have maybe improved. I think acceleration may have gained a little bit. A small increase, probably crossing. As again, I say, the stats are pretty good. You know, I don't think he's developed the way I'd expect him to develop, if I'm honest. I'd have expected with the initial stats he had in-game to be a lot better than this. But when you see the stats that accompany this, um, in terms of his time at Arsenal, you can certainly see why he would be a, a good investment. Really just one change to the PPM line there. And that's just basically getting forward whenever possible. So he's never taken that out of his game. If we jump to the, the profile screen, we don't have a great um, chance to properly look at him in this one because the first save is Motherwell manager. So I could see little stats there. Here I'm unemployed seven years in, so don't quite get the, the joys of looking at that. But you can see again, ball always be primarily natural on the left hand side it's interesting it is going to keep him at a decent level on the right hand side so he could possibly be if you're really struggling someone that can cover in at that side um, if need be like he has in real life for scotland you know but uh, it's just mental to think he didn't actually play much longer at celtic as you can see here in the bottom right corner did leave in the first january transfer window to arsenal 171 appearances and two goals, giving him 244 appearances in his career with six goals. So we'll document his career now. Now, you can see there, 32.5 million. I know, you're probably laughing as well. Crazy money in the January transfer window, but he obviously did not feel that Kolesniak was, was a player they wanted to play at left back and, and probably felt natural Monreal the same. But Tierney came in there, you can see there what a first season he had there at Celtic in this, you know, Five assists, six player matches, an average rating of seven point six three and two goals as Celtic probably won the league in this before the move to Arsenal. Every season apart from one, he's been over a seven average rating, so I'd always deem that as a success. So maybe just the nineteen twenty season where he averaged the six point nine four is a bit of a negative. Twenty twenty one, I think he did have a major injury, I think it was a three month broken foot, but we'll certainly get into that. But aside from that, you know, if he's always averaging over seven I deem it a successful season. It means he's played well for the club. Not really scored much, but again, left back, you don't expect that. And a couple of assists, that's good to see as well. Player of the matches, again, if you're winning and, get, and scoring goals, it's probably going to be a forward-thinking players that are going to get the player of the matches. So as long as he is getting good ratings, I'd assume him to be a good success. And I think for £32.5 the fact he's valued at £41 million, there's no reason why Arsenal haven't gotten a good buy out of this. We could also make a lot more money in the future. We'll quickly look at milestones to see if there's anything, just to see if he's won. So, there we go. First season, he lost the Betfred Cup, but Player of the Month there, a couple of Player of the Months, and Young Player, so he's done the double there, a couple of Team of the Weeks, and you can see there, 32, well, 25 million up front, 32.5 in the long run. If we scroll down here, let's see what he's done. He's a bright Scottish record sale, so that's to be expected. Runner up in the FA Cup. 2018 World Team of the Year, so a good start as well. Running up in the Carabao Cup, Premier League Team of the Year. Won the Champions League with Arsenal, won the FA Cup with Arsenal, won the Super Cup, was in the def was the Defender of the Year in the Champions Cup, won the Club World Championship. Following season was a runner up in the European Cup, so holy shit, he's taken Arsenal to, to certainly great levels. Won the Europa League in 2021 with Arsenal as well. And another Carabao Cup there. So they haven't won the league with them there, but they've certainly, you know, won a lot of European trophies. Uh, something that's certainly varied Arsenal. If I'm right in saying, did they win something in two? I want to say 2000. Don't quote me on that one. But as I say, it's good to see that he has won, uh, as I say, a few trophies there. Uh, and as I say, it's a career that has won certainly a lot of things. And as I say, I just wanted to cap back on that injury thing. So he has quite a few knocks. Nothing seems to be really bad to say apart from that broken foot, which was from tackling a three-month injury, which did cost him probably the start of that season. But apart from that, it's just been little small niggles and knocks every so often. A few hits to the ankle, pull groin he's had once, tight groin, tight calf, calf strain. But most of them have been in training with a couple in matches as well. But overall, Kieran Tierney, 
as I say, he's definitely someone that might cost you a bit of money. But if you can, if you are a big team, I don't see why he can't be a left back for at least ten seasons. And if you're a small club, or not a small club, but a smaller club that has the money, the financial resource uh, in the Premier League, he could be someone you could bring in for say twenty odd million, uh, and maybe put him in a minimum release clause of forty, forty five, so then he can push him on, get a good couple of good years service, twenty million pound profit, and, and let him go to a bigger club if you haven't reached that level yet. So I'd probably say Kieran Tierney up there with one of the best left backs in this year's football manager. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you did buy Kieran Tierney, let me know how he's been doing for you, how much you paid for him, or if you've been managing Celtic, how's he been doing for you. If you've got any suggestions in the future for who else we can cover, as I say, I've got an extensive list of players domestic and internationally that I do want to cover. Um, it's more so people have found in the NEC save, people have found in the holiday save, as my NEC save starts to kind of hit the, the new gen territory. If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably noticed that it's just new gens I'm, I'm constantly tweeting about. But as always, cheers for watching, guys, and hopefully we'll see a lot more FM content going as the new year carries on. So cheers for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time for some more FM18 Scout Reports. See ya.